So my name's Eddie Yang. I'm a PhD student at UCSD. I'm super glad to be here. All right, uh, sorry for the hold up. Um, can you all see the slides and the, sl and the slide change? Yes. Okay. All right, um, so my name's Eddie Yang. I'm a PhD student at UCSD. I'm super glad to be here and talking about this joint project with Yiqing Xu on uh, hierarchically regularized entropy balancing. So um, with the observational data, we often have to make covariate adjustments in order to make causal claims about our estimated quantities. And for this project, um, we consider um, covariate adjustments in cross-sectional settings with binary treatments. And there has been a lot of work in this area on sort of covariate adjustment or data pre-processing methods. Uh, for example, there's uh, Corson exact matching, genetic matching, um, covariate balancing propensity score, residual balancing and kernel balancing. And what we do in this project is to extend another method in this group called entropy balancing or eval for short. So eval is a reweighting scheme that's introduced by Jens Hamiller, and it's aimed at estimating the ATT under conditional ignorability. It does so by adjusting the weights for the control units, um, such that the uh, covariant moments of the control group, for example, the first moments that are the means of the covariates or the second moments that are the variances of the covariates of the control group, match those of the treatment group exactly. So um, in essence, eval solves a constrained optimization problem. It tries to maximize the entropy of weights. Um, that is to say, it tries to keep the weights as close to uniform weights as possible with the constraints that the covariant moments match between the treatment and the control groups. So eval um, has some appealing properties. Uh, first, it's, um, it's among a class of uh, weights that directly achieves covariate balance. So there's no need for iterative specification searching and balance checking that are sometimes necessary for uh, some other methods. And second, uh, eval is very fast. Um, its computational complexity is proportional to the number of moment conditions. So even for a large data set with a lot of observations, um, eval can converge in a fraction of a second. And lastly, there's a recent paper that shows um, eval is doubly robust. Um, so eval is great, um, but it has two main problems. First is that it requires researchers to specify the moments of the covariates to be balanced on. Uh, for example, I can specify that uh, the means of the covariates to be balanced on, or I can specify that the means and the variances of the uh, covariates to be balanced on. So this obviously uh, creates some room for specification searching and selective reporting. Uh, but more importantly, um, this may lead to biased estimates, um, even when conditional ignorability is satisfied. Um, for example, if I specify that only uh, the means of the covariates to be balanced on, uh, but uh, some higher order terms of the covariates actually confound the treatment and the outcome, in that case, uh, my estimate may be biased. So the second problem is that um, eval may find it difficult to converge uh, when there are many moment conditions. So this can lead to um, just outright convergence failure or highly concentrated weights, um, in which case the subsequent estimator may have high variance. Um, and um, probably more troubling is that when we want to address the first problem by including many moment conditions in our specification, uh, but only to find that eval uh, cannot converge in that case. Um, so this second problem actually makes it uh, difficult for us to solve the first problem. So for our extension, we'll try to address these two problems. Um, but before getting into that, um, there's actually a recent extension to um, eval called kernel balancing or KBAL uh, that's introduced by Chad Haslett in 2018. Um, so essentially kernel balancing tries to address the first problem by expanding the covariate space uh, through a kernel matrix K. 
and achieving uh, approximate, uh, approximate balance on K. Um, but kernel balancing is quite slow um, because it has to compute um, and achieve balance on this n by n kernel matrix. Its computational complexity is proportional to the square of the number of observations. And also because of this, um, it's uh, practically uh, impossible to uh, search for the hyperparameter value uh, because uh, in that case, we would have to recompute the kernel matrix every time the hyperparameter value changes, uh, which is very computationally uh, cumbersome. Um, but for our approach, which we call hierarchically regularized entropy balancing, or HBAL, um, we also expand the covariate space through a series expansion up to the third order on the covariates. And we apply hierarchical regularization on the higher order terms. And in addition, we introduce an automated uh, hyperparameter tuning scheme that uh, explicitly selects um, a hyperparameter value. So I'll get into each of these points in um, later slides. So um, for our approach, it has several advantages. Uh, first, by expanding the covariate space, um, it reduces model dependency and improves the robustness of causal estimates. And by uh, using regularization, um, it also uh, reduces the chance of optimization failure and highly concentrated weights. Uh, which would then give us lower variance of the weights and the subsequent estimator. And regularization and hyperparameter tuning also help with uh, preventing overfitting. And lastly, because um, we uh, sort of uh, fixed uh, zero expansion uh, up to the third order, um, it helps uh, avoid uh, specification searches. Um, all right, um, getting into the optimization of uh, HVAL, um, here I first reproduced the original optimization, uh, optimization problem in um, eval. So basically it's the constrained optimization problem written as the dual problem using Lagrangian multipliers. And the parameter to keep in mind of are the lambdas, um, which is the third sub bullet point so the lambdas are the Lagrangian multipliers. And intuitively, um, what these lambdas do is they control um, how important um, it is for a given, um, um, how important it is a given um, moment condition uh, for the objective function and the solution weight. So for a large um, lambda j, it means that uh, imbalance on the jth covariate will contribute um, significantly to the objective function and uh, the calculation of the solution weights. So um, applying uh, regularization in this framework amounts to um, adding an extra term to this optimization problem, uh, which is showing in red here. Um, so this um, extra term um, is just the uh, grouped L2 penalty on the Lagrangian multipliers. And um, that's scaled by a hyperparameter alpha. Uh, but note, um, this is slightly different from the standard ridge regularization in that um, the L2 penalties are grouped uh, by different groupings of the covariates, um, hence the summation sign uh, in the uh, last term. Uh, but I'll get into more detail about uh, the grouped um, L2 norm uh, in a later slide. So to implement eval, we first perform series expansion. For example, given two covariates x1 and x2, we can uh, use series expansion up to the third order um, as shown here. And then because we only want to regularize the additional information that these higher order terms contain. We, after series expansion, we residualize these higher order terms against the, le uh, the linear terms, uh, which are the x1, and x2 here. And um, after this, we can apply a hierarchical regularization um, in that we can uh, group these um, higher order terms into different groupings. 
for example, here I group the um, square terms into one group, the pairwise interaction into another group, the cubic terms into a third group, and the rest of the higher order terms into a fourth group. And then we can apply uh, uh, regularization in a hierarchical structure by having grouped um, L2 norms on the corresponding lambdas for each group um, as shown here. So essentially what this means is that it allows uh, penalties for different groupings of the covariates to vary, um, hence allowing different um, influences of these uh, groupings of covariates uh, on the solution weights. And finally, we uh, introduce an um, automated hyperparameter uh, searching scheme uh, by using cross-validation and grid search. Um, so this is done uh, by this uh, scheme shown here. So given a hyperparameter value for alpha, and if we're using fourfold cross-validation, we can split our control group into four subsamples. And we'll use that alpha value and three of our uh, subsamples to calculate a set of Lagrangian multipliers. And then we will apply the set of Lagrangian multipliers on our held out fourth sample to calculate the solution weights. And then we can reweight the held out sample by the solution weights. And finally, we can compare the covariant moments of this reweighted um, held out sample against um, the covariant moments of the treatment group. Um, and the evalu evaluation metric we use here is root mean squared error. So if we have a grid of uh, hyperparameter values, we would uh, simply select the uh, hyperparameter value with the lowest root mean squared error. So to demonstrate the uh, performance of HVAL, uh, we use simulations and an example, um, and an empirical example. So for simulations, we want to model a situation where um, high order terms of the covariates confound the treatment and the outcome. So for both uh, the treatment assignment and the outcome design, we use uh, nonlinear functions of the covariates. Here, uh, I present one of the uh, outcome designs as shown on the left panel here. So the y-axis are the ATT estimates and the x-axis are uh, different data pre-processing methods. And uh, our approach HBAL is showing in great. Um, and the true ATT estimate is fixed at zero. So as you can see here, um, our uh, HBAL recovers the true ATT estimate quite well, um, I guess, in, uh, in terms of performance comparable to KBAL. And on the uh, right panel here, uh, is a runtime comparison between KBAL and HBAL. So this is runtime per second, uh, runtime in seconds per iteration. Um, so as you can see, um, as the sample size increases, uh, the runtime for KBAL increases exponentially, whereas uh, HBAL uses only a fraction of uh, KBAL's runtime. So getting into the last bit, which is the empirical example. Uh, here, we're looking at a APSR paper by Ferverda and Miller in 2014. And they're looking at the effect of the type of foreign rule on local resistance. And they compare uh, German and Vichy governed French municipalities during World War II. And they find that uh, fighting and sabotage events uh, or incidents uh, were lower in the native uh, Vichy governed French municipalities. Um, although their main design is an RDD design, uh, as a robustness check, they used entropy balancing to achieve mean balance on nine covariates. Uh, but for our case, we want to model a situation where researchers often uh, provide reasons, whether theoretical or practical to include higher moments of the covariates in the specification. So instead, we randomly include, uh, we keep the nine uh, covariates, uh, and we randomly include higher moments of the covariates uh, 
in our specifications. So we randomly selected a thousand uh, sub specifications out of all possible specifications. And here are the ATT estimates and their corresponding confidence intervals for these two outcomes. And as shown in the, uh, by the black dots and the gray whiskers. As you can see for both outcomes, depending on the specification, we can get an ATT estimate that's either negative or positive, uh, which is definitely less than ideal. Uh, but if we were to use uh, HBAL and fix the serial expansion up to the third order, we would simply get one specification as shown in uh, blue here. Um, and this is quite different actually from just achieving a mean balance on the nine covariates. So to summarize, um, we extend entropy balancing by um, applying hierarchical regularization on expanded covariate space. And we introduce an automated hyperparameter search um, scheme. And we show that um, HBAL has the ability to achieve approximate balance on uh, many moment conditions and uh, that it has some appealing properties such as reducing model dependency. Um, so this is uh, a still a work in progress. Um, in the future, uh, we plan to bound the bias that arises from regularization. Um, we want to also couple HBAL with an estimator to make it doubly robust. And lastly, um, we want to uh, introduce ridge regularization on both the group and the individual parameter level to allow more fine-grained uh, regularization. Uh, I think that's all. Happy to uh, answer questions and looking forward to the discussion.